Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. In today's episode, we're looking at Nikon's new full-frame mirrorless cameras, the Z6 and the Z7. After months of rumour and speculation, Nikon have finally announced the details of their new full-frame mirrorless camera system. And it is actually going to be two cameras. In a previous video, I said I thought it was going to be one camera, but I was wrong. It is actually two cameras. The first is the Z7 that's going to be released in September of 2018 followed closely behind in November by the Z6. Now both cameras are going to use the same camera body. It's smaller and lighter than a traditional DSLR, has a very contemporary look with a nice deep grip to help balance the camera when using longer lenses. The buttons and dials layout will be familiar to Nikon users as it's very similar to uh, DSLRs of the past. Both bodies are also weather sealed um, to the same standards as the D850. The major innovation that Nikon has brought out in these cameras is their Z mount for lenses. Now the traditional Nikon F mount has been around for nearly 60 years and the new Z mount is considerably wider and shallower than the old F mount ever was. The new Z mount is 55mm in width whereas the F mount was 44mm. It also has a much shallower flange depth which brings the lens much closer to the sensor. This is going to allow for more coverage of the sensor by the lenses and allowing Nikon to make brighter and faster lenses in the future. One of the other things that Nikon have announced with this is actually uh, an adapter called an FTZ, which is F to Z mount, which will allow you to mount up to 360 previous F mount lenses on the camera, with around, I think, 95 of them working with full AF and other functions. Aside from the new lens mount, the other addition that Nikon has made to their Z cameras is five axis in body stabilization. This is the first time Nikon's used in body stabilization. In the past, they've always relied on having stabilized lenses, but the Z6 and the Z7 will both have five axis in body stabilization. So let's start with the cameras themselves. The first one to be released is going to be the Nikon Z7, and this is coming out in September 2018. And this is going to be the flagship of the range, and it has a whopping 45.7 megapixel sensor, which Nikon says will give better image quality than the D850. Coupled with the sensor, Nikon have also added their new X-Speed 6 processor to speed up all of the processing within the camera as well. Autofocus. The Z7 will have 493 autofocus points, which are both phase and contrast detection. And this is going to give 90% coverage of the frame. So you've got virtually edge-to-edge -edge coverage with your autofocus points on the Z7. ISO range on the Z7 is similar to the D850. It has an ISO range of ISO 64 to 25,600. The Z7 will also have a shooting rate of nine frames per second with full autofocus. On the video front, the Z7 will shoot 4K and it will shoot 4K up to 30 frames per second using the full width of the sensor, the same as the D850. It will also shoot 1080p at up to 120 frames per second. And Nikon have also introduced their N-Log profile for the video side of this camera, which will allow for a much flatter profile and better grading options in post-production. The Z7 is going to be available from the end of September 2018, and it will be priced at £3,399 for the body only, or if you want it with the kit 24-70 to lens, that's going to be £3,999. So that's the Z7. The Z7 is very much going to be the flagship of these two cameras. The other camera is the Z6, which is going to be released in November 2018, and is very much the baby brother of the Z7. They both use exactly the same body, with the same buttons, the same dials, and exactly the same lens mount. The difference with the Z6 is it's going to have a 24.5 megapixel full frame sensor in there. It will still have the 5 axis in body stabilization. ISO range on the Z6 is going to be ISO 100 to ISO 51200. So you're getting a slightly wider ISO range on the Z6 over the Z7. Autofocus. Autofocus on the Z6 is going to have 273 autofocus points. Again, both phase and contrast detection. As well as a wider ISO range, the Z6 does outdo the Z7 in one other area. The Z6 will actually shoot at 12 frames per second as opposed to the Z7's 9 frames per second. So you're getting a slightly faster shooting rate with the Z6. Video wise with the Z6, it's the same story as the Z7. You're getting 4K video using the full frame sensor size at up to 30 frames per second and 1080p at 120 frames per second. And once again, it also has Nikon's N-Log profile. The Z6 will be available uh, from November 2018 with the body only price of £2,099. 
If you want to buy it with the 24 to 70 kit lens, it's going to be £2,699. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned about both the Z6 and the Z7 is they're going to both have just a single XQD card slot. This is going to be uh, compatible with the CFast Express cards with a firmware update later, but they both have just a single card slot. Now, I think a lot of camera users, especially Nikon users, have got used to the models having dual card slots. And this may seem like a bit of a, a, a backward step for Nikon. Dual card slots are really useful for one for backing up your images. One for, you know, if you have a card failure, you can always be backing up to the second card slot. But I think mainly in this day and age where video is becoming much more important, a lot of people use the dual card slots for one for stills images and one for video. So you can assign the card slots for those. But both cameras are just going to have the single XQD card slot. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that. Whether you think that is a backward step of Nikon not putting the dual card slot in there and just having the single card. So the final piece of the puzzle is the fact that these are a new camera system. They're not just two cameras, they're a camera system. So Nikon need lenses to go with them. And to that end, they've released what they're calling their S-line lenses, which are designed to work with the new Z-mount. And to begin with, they're offering three options. There's a 24-70 f4 zoom, there's a 50mm 1.8 prime, and a 35mm 1.8 prime. Nikon have also released uh, what they're calling a roadmap, a sort of timeline, of when they're having other lenses available. The new Z-mount is going to allow for faster, brighter lenses, and this is evidenced by the fact that Nikon have announced in 2019 they're going to be releasing a 58mm f0.95 knock lens, which quality-wise, should blow everything else out of the water. So for now, that concludes our look at the two new Nikons, the Z6 and the Z7. And what do you think? Do you think a Nikon uh, have done enough? Have they, have they reached everyone's expectations with this camera? Have they done enough to take on the likes of Sony in the full-frame mirrorless market? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, I'm Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.